All right, hello YouTube, Mucklug here. It is Tuesday, March 19th. We knew there was a patch today, but uh, just skimming this, there is some extra stuff we didn't know about. How exciting. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, first off, note to users of third-party programs. This game may not launch or work properly after we release a new build if you use a third-party program due to possible incompatibilities. Kind of surprised to see this note here because that's always been true. ArenaNet cannot offer support if a third-party modification breaks, interferes with, or prevents you from playing Guild Wars or Guild Wars 2. Our policy regarding third-party programs can be found here. So, for example, I use Blishhut and ArcDPS. ArcDPS breaks every single update. Um, it even had an error message when I logged in just a second ago. However, it is still on my screen, so I don't know. But uh, And then Blishhud, like for example, uh, here's my mount wheel. It, it's still working right now. Blishhud is an overlay, not an add-on, so it doesn't usually break with updates. Um, but ArcDPS almost always does. But that's not anything new. Uh, maybe they're just going to include that as like a copy pasta in their notes from now on. Um, general, added new custom post-processing options to the graphic options menu. This allows new fine control over what pro post-processing effects are active. Optimized, uh, loaded, uh, yeah, 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 hold on, let's pause there for a second, hang on, uh, let's see, graphics, and swapping back to in-game, uh, post-processing, bloom, color grading, color tint, distortion, light ray, selection, outline, ambient occlusion, depth blur, light adaptation, uh, motion blur, and environment zone intensity still, so, yeah, those are there. Optimize loading times between starting the game and getting to the character selection screen. Load times are improved by approximately three seconds, depending on your hardware config. Okay. That's welcome. Uh, updated 11 item converters to use the vendor interface, allowing these to draw directly from the player banks in addition to their inventories. Oh! All right, so uh, just again to say this in a way that everyone can understand, there are items in the game called converters. I actually have guides on that. Uh, you can you know, search my YouTube channel just for the word convert and you will find them. Converters turn one thing you don't need into bag of random loot. Might be money. Uh, most notably, if you've ever had your inventory be completely filled with Imperial Fragments or Dragonite Ore or Bloodstone Dust piles, those are great for converters because you can convert them into other things. Now, historically, uh, for example, Gleam of Sentience, you open this up and it's got a vendor menu, which means it would pull from your material storage in most cases. Um, stuff like that. However, others, such as the Star of Gratitude, which eats Imperial Fragments, would not. You had to have the Imperial Fragments in your bag. So literally, part of my daily routine is I would go to the bank, get Imperial Fragments out into my bag, and then shove them into the Star of Gratitude. Uh, Princess would eat Dragonite Ore, Maudry would eat Bloodstone Dust, Herda eats Bloodstone Dust, but none of these pulled from your bank. Now, though, if I click the Star of Gratitude, it pulls from the freaking bank. So there we go. I just fed it 250 Imperial Fragments. They gone. So Herda, and there we go. Boom. Oh my gosh, that's great. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's been needed. It hasn't been something that I've heard people crying about recently, but I, that is a welcome change. Welcome change. All right. Uh, and that was added to, well, it, it, I just you can read it. The, all of those items got that treatment. All right. Excuse my sniffles. Sorry about that. Fixed an issue that would cause fashion prompts during the April Fool's Fashion Shows Alliance arch to end if the show went for long enough. Honestly, I wish that if fashion shows hit a certain point in time, they just ended. So, like, you know, the uh, the, the the people uh, at the beginning, they can just, like, filibuster their dress until the people at the end don't get to go. Uh, I think that would be a good, a good addition to fashion shows. Uh, prospective contestants will now be moved to the audience area between fashion shows. Uh, cheering skills in fashion shows now grant the contestant on stage an escalating amount of approval from the judges based on the skill used. I'm going to be honest, none of this makes any sense to me. I'm just reading it for you guys. Uh, the Noblesse Oblige Mastery, which increases revive speed and removes downed penalties on a successful revive, will no longer remove downed penalties in strike missions and raid challenge mode encounters. This will help maintain the intended difficulty level of these encounters by reinstating some penalties for ignoring encounter mechanics. Okay. Amanitas moved the Starlight Lantern from inside the Great Debate Hall to outside the Great Debate Hall. Oh, I believe this one you could only access it when a certain event was going on because you needed an NPC to open the door. So I think this will make it to where you do not have to worry about that. Awesome. Uh, removed the experience and karma consumables from the Silver Map Meta Event Progress Chest awarded during the Defense of Amnitas Meta Event. The rewards have been adjusted to compensate for this change. Okay. Uh, Inner Naos moved a greater arcane chest in Niadra Dreamer Sanctum to a location where players would not get stuck. 
Uh, fix an issue that could occasionally cause Hylek to join the Cryptus. Yes, so the there's a Cryptus, uh, it's like the Demon of Gluttony or something, that uses the same, like, frame as a Hylek, which, kind of weird, but okay, moving on. Uh, and they recently, they just, they're flat out Hyleks were showing up. Uh, just, just frogs. Not f frog looking demons, just frogs were showing up. Uh, strike missions. Temple of Phoebe challenge mode. Oh, okay, really quick, for those who have not been keeping up to it, maybe it's not something you cared to watch. Temple of Phoebe challenge mode came out uh, a short time ago. Um, and I think at this moment in time, I know of three groups that have cleared it. That's a total of three 10-man parties, which is 30 people. And all of Guild Wars 2 have cleared it. It is insanely difficult. Now, my own personal thoughts on that, really quickly, before we move on. Um, I don't mind that. You know, when they they add this stuff to the game, like, for example, when they made the Ceres fight, they got a story fight out of it, they got a uh, strike mission out of it, and they got a strike mission challenge mode out of it. So their development time that went into that made three encounters. And pretty much anyone can enjoy two of them. The third one, though, you gotta be, like, super, super try hard. Now, do I think... I've had a lot of people ask me this. Do I think it's a bad thing if there are encounters in the game that only, like, 0.01% of the community can do? No, I don't. I think it's wasteful if they spend a lot of development time making a fight from scratch, and then most of the people cannot, uh, you know, see that fight. The same thing happened in WoW Vanilla with Nax Ramus, and then they reused a lot of those assets in Wrath of the Lich King, because, like, only 0.1% of the community got to see Nax Ramus at all, because it was so tough. Um, even making the key to get in the door, but that's a story for another day. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, however, uh, they have... Well, I'll just read it because I think they're about to say what I was about to tell you. We reduce the overall enemy health of the Temple of Phoebe Challenge mode to make the fight accessible to more players. We will be monitoring the strike mission to ensure that this brings about it to the desired level of challenge, and we are ready to make more changes if it still remains more difficult than intended. To give players the ability to experience and try to defeat the fight in its original form, we've added an option to its challenge mode to activate Legendary Challenge. Uh, players who had defeated Ceres before this change, or players who defeat him with the Legendary Challenge mode active, will earn a new Legendary Conqueror of Ceres title to demonstrate this feat. So, that means that Ceres, in total, has four difficulty modes in the story. There's the story mission, where you fight him on your own. There is the normal strike uh, difficulty, which I have a guide for. I've pugged that one. I, uh, that's very puggable. There is the new middle challenge mode. It's just going to be called challenge mode, but it is a step down from what it was yesterday. And now there's legendary, which is what it was yesterday. So they want the, that third one to be one that more people have access to, and the fourth one to just be for the people that really want to go hard. Which, like I said, to my knowledge, three groups have cleared at the time of this recording that I know about. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's... Yeah, story, normal, challenge mode, and insanity. Alright, change the Empowered Envious Gaze skill to not steal quickness or alacrity. That is not the first time they've done that, because that messes things up historically. They had the same problem in... Um, uh, what was that last fractal that came out? Uh, the Surf. Silent Surf. Uh, in Silent Surf, whenever the boss would steal Alacrity or Quickness from a player, it would get the cooldowns of the boss's abilities would you'd be affected by that, and they would go out of whack. And then later on, the boss would do like the indicator for a skill, and then do the skill like two seconds later, and it just, you know, <laughs> take you out. So bosses stealing alacrity, like bosses removing alac from players is one thing, but if the boss steals it and acquires the alac, it can mess up their timers with the way the game is currently coded. And so it does not surprise me that they had to get rid of this again because they had to do that for Silent Surf. Um, fix an issue that could cause projectiles to be obstructed when attacking the an embodiment in the split phase if that embodiment was active during the phase transition. Fix an issue in which selecting an option from the challenge mode did not reset the encounter if the event was already in progress. Okay. Cosmic Observatory Challenge Mode. Fixed an issue that could cause the Precision Anxiety Achievement to be awarded even if the entire party did not meet the requirements. Uh, I've done that challenge mode. I've made a guide for that challenge mode. I don't know that achievement because I never really look at achievements, but there you go. Structure PvP. A new achievement category, Profession Achievements, has been added to the PvP section of the Achievements panel. New tiers of Champion Profession Achievements have been added to the Profession Achievements category of the PvP section, each with a new title. Players can progress those achievements with their current PvP-ranked wins by traveling to the Heart of the Mist. 
A new achievement named True Dragon has been added. Players who are PvP rank 469 or higher will complete this achievement upon entering Heart of the Mist. Uh... What is my rank? <laughs> I just know I'm Dragon. Uh, I have no idea what rank I am. So usually this this bar here goes through like, you know, bunny and tiger and stuff, and then it gets to dragon, and then it's just dragon over and over and over and over and over. I have no idea what rank I'm at. Okay. Um World v World. Wait, someone said go to PvP and the bar should show you at the bottom. Oh, like go into PvP? Okay, I'll I'll do that later. I'll do, we'll do that later. Alright. Uh, World v. World. Nine new tiers of Realm Avenger achievements have been added to the World v. World section of the Achievements panel. Each tier comes with a new variant of the Ultimate Dominator title that reflects the number of players that you've defeated, such as Ultimate Dominator 2. Players can progress these new achievements with their current kill counts by traveling to Eternal Battlegrounds, Alpine Borderlands, or Desert Borderlands maps. So, uh, to rephrase that, it, you, you may already have the uh, requirements fulfilled, you just need to load into those uh, maps so that it updates and gives you your achievements. Uh, the Siege Disabler trick has been updated and renamed to Siege Disruptor. Disruptors will now reduce outgoing siege damage by 66% and they will cause affected siege devices to take 66% increased damage for the duration. Golems still have skills disabled. Okay, okay. So if someone, if one guy runs into an enemy horde stealthed and manages to get a disabler down, it's not going to just shut down all the catapults for 50 people now. Uh, but they will be vastly weakened. Interesting. I kind of like that. i um, very curious to see how that affects gameplay. Uh, we're modernizing the loadouts of Keep Lords with the addition of a new healing skill that aids objective defenders in combat, giving the Lord a more active role in battle. Keep Lords in Alpine Borderlands and Eternal Battlegrounds will now have a channeled healing skill at 75% and 25% health thresholds. Their defiance bars will only be available at these health thresholds and can be broken in order to prevent the skill from being fully channeled. We will be closely monitoring player feedback to determine if the skill should be introduced to Castle and Tower Lords as well. New 24, 28, and 32 slot bags can be purchased from Outfitters and World v. World. 32? Uh, these bags have been added to the Ascended League vendors in PvP. Okay, you know what? Maybe we will go into the PvP lobby, because I want to see the price of these bags. 32 slot bags crafted take a few hundred gold in materials, primarily because of the Supreme Runes of Holding. Uh, I just got a bunch of stuff. Legendary Phantom, Legendary Genius, Legendary Hunter, Legendary Hunter again. Uh, Fabled Hunter. Let's, uh, oh, the others disappeared. I guess I shouldn't have waypointed. Okay. All right. What am I looking for? Ascended League Vendors. Ascended Weapon League? Ascended Armor League. All right, hang on a second. Uh, Grandmaster Craftsman Components, Subsidian Weapons. No, I don't see it up there. Let's see where's up there. Um, Tom of the Mist. Muck has a new patch so far. We're still reading the notes, my friend. Looking for bags. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Bags. Pillagers pack. Two box of Grandmaster Marks. Unopened. One Supreme Rune of Holding, 250 Shards of Glory, and 20 tickets gets you a 24 slot bag. Um, the 24 slot bag, plus two more boxes, plus three Supreme Runes, and 20 more tickets gets you a 28 slot bag. And the 28 slot bag, plus eight runes. Okay, so you still need Supreme Runes. And box of Grandmaster Marks and tickets. So all of this except the runes you can get from PvP, and then you would still need the runes. Okay, so 11 runes total. What would that price be today? Supreme, what is that shield? Oh my gosh, uh, I'm on the wrong screen. One sec. Supreme runes of holding, 21. All right, so currently need 11. So 237 plus WoW stuff, uh, or PVP stuff. Well, uh, it's another option. Also, my PVP rank is apparently 315. All right, well, it's, it's an option if you want it. 
And again, if you are going to get bags that way, I recommend getting all 20 slot and then slowly make them all 24 and then slowly make them all 28. Don't just have one go straight to 32 because for the price of that, you can have all of them be like 24 or 28. Um, items. Remove the April Fool's event requirement from the Chatoyant Elixir. Fixed an issue that caused the Expedition Cape to not have an upgrade slot. And the items needed to progress the Astro Ward Arsenal achievement sold by Heroic's Notary Vendor no longer require the player to type out the name of the item to safely discard them. Uh, Nemox says, try the Candy Corn Gobbler now. It's insane. Uh, let me... I don't know what character has it. Candy Corn Gobbler is on Mucklet Twitch. Is that this character? That is this character. Where is it? Candy. Okay, it was right there. All right, Candy Corn Gobbler. Um, use it 100 times. <laughs> ah, that's so great. No more using a clicker. Oh my God, look at all those buffs. Uh, yeah, forget to get rid of the costume. No more using a clicker, which is the worst part about that mucking thing. You could, you could just shove a thousand candy corn in it and then go on about your day. Candy corn prices to the moon. Yeah, like I myself had the gobbler and I stopped using it just because it's a it's a pita. It's an absolute pita. It's a, I stopped using it myself. Now I might go back to using it. And yeah, buy candy corn stonks now. Buy the dip. All right. Profession skills. General. New changes. Relic of fireworks. Fix an issue that could cause some projectiles to not trigger this relic. Relic of Ice, this relic can now only strike the intended missile targets. Reduce the power coefficient by half in World of World only. Alright. Oh my god, class changes. Alright, Elementalist. This release includes some updates to Arcane Skills. Arcane Blast and Arcane Wave had a bit too much overlap with each other. We wanted to give Arcane Wave a more unique identity by adding a movement component. We've also reworked and renamed the Elementalist Surge trait giving it some more powerful bonuses to individual skills instead of uh, all of them inflicting bonus conditions. Uh, new changes. Pistol. Fixed an issue that caused skills to not properly use legendary weapon effects. Elemental bullets are no longer lost when using a conjured weapon or gliding. Uh, March 19th, balance update preview. Uh, let's see. Water try to increase the power coefficient. Okay. I'm going to skim anything that is past the point of uh, the preview. We've already gone over in the past, so I will skim that, but I'll have a link to this down below, or I'll, you know, if you want to pause and read it, that either one of those, uh, whatever you need. All right, um, Updraft fixed an issue that caused the skill to display a warning for allies. Flame Uprising fixed an issue that caused the skill to inflict less burning than intended in competitive. Cleric Leap reduced the cooldown in competitive. Earthen Vortex reduced the cooldown in competitive. Rust Frenzy players can now move while casting the skill. Arcane Brilliance now grants additional healing when used as a combo finisher. Arcane Power no longer grants bonuses to allies. The skill now grants a flat amount of ferocity for 5 seconds instead of the bonus being linked to the critical strike stacks. Reduce the cooldown from 35 to 30 seconds. Arcane Wave now leaps to the targeted area before dealing damage and now dazes enemies that it strikes. Why didn't they call it Arcane Leap then? Uh, reduce the range from 900 to 600. Reduce the attack radius. Increase the power coefficient in competitives. Reduce the ammo recharge time in PvE. Elemental Surge. This trait has been renamed Arcane Lightning. This trait no longer causes arcane skills to inflict conditions and instead enhances each arcane skill as follows. It gives brilliance protection to the user. Arcane Wave immobilizes enemies. Arcane Shield grants stability to the user when the shield expires. Arcane Power grants additional crit strike to the user. Arcane Blast blinds enemies. Come on and slam and welcome to Japan, kids. It's time for tentacles. I never said that. Someone made that with uh, AI. Uh, one with air. Increase the super speed duration with from 1.5 seconds to 3 in PvP. The trait still grants reduced super speed duration in PvP when the fresh air trait is equipped. Aquamancer's training. Increase the outgoing healing modifier. Uh, Tempest. New changes. Tempestuous Araya lowered the Gandhi damage increase from 10% to 5% in PvE only. Uh, wash the pain away. Increase the radius of the first pulse and the second pulse. Lucid Singularity. This trait now applies might instead of alacrity in competitives. Elemental Bastion, increase the healing coefficient in Worldy World. Uh, Weaver, bolstered elements, this trait now causes stances to grant prot instead of barrier. Alright. 
Engineer. In this update, we've made improvements to power-based Hollowsmith builds of PvE to make them a bit more competitive, alongside some reworks of less used traits in the Invention Specialization and some minor improvements to Rifle and PvP. Uh, glue Shot, Pistol 5, increase cooldown uh, in PvE only, increase power coefficient in PvE. Blunderbuss, uh, uh, let's see, these are both Rifle. Reduce the cooldown of these Rifle skills in PvP. Um, these are Hollow Smith Sword. Reduce the cooldown of these abilities in PvE. Increase power coefficient of Radiant Arc. Med Blaster can now auto attack allies and increase the angle of the skill. Um, that is nice. That is a Med Kit 1, the little spritz spritz thing, which actually heals quite a bit, but you know, it looks like a little spritz spritz. Uh, Bandage Blast, increase the missile velocity and the angle of the skill. Fixed an issue that caused missile angles to be incorrect when shooting at allies with full health. Infu uh, that's Medkit 2, by the way. They have reworked that uh, recently, and now they are widening the cone, which should make it easier to use. Infusion Bomb fixed an issue that caused the boons from the skill to have a lower duration than intended in PvE. Um, hmm. I'm curious what it's going to be now. Uh, Infusion Bomb is Medkit 5, and it is a source of multiple boons uh, for the Scropper and Mechanist support uh, builds. So curious to see how much they were getting hurt by that. Grenade Barrage fixed an issue preventing the skill from triggering Relic of Fireworks. Automated Medical Response has been reworked. It now grants regen to allies when you use your healing skills tool belt skill. Okay, this is something I need to test right now. So healing skills tool belt skill. Um, engineer, me Mechanist, trades their tool belt to have a mech. So I have no idea how this is going to work with a mechanist. So let's find out real quick. So if I open up the trait line here, uh, automated medical response. Grant regen to nearby allies when you use a healing skills associated tool belt skill. All right, so I've got a med kit. If I do F1, uh, it says it gives nine and a half seconds of regen. If I pick a different trait, it no longer says it gives that regen. Okay, so it looks like it works on bandage self. All right, just to test it, I'm going to use it, and there is regen. Okay, so it does work with heal scrapper with bandage self. Okay, if I swap to heal mech, all right, here's heal mech, and if I choose that trait, explosive knuckle. <laughs> okay, it works. Uh, weird, but I'm glad they thought of this. All right, so Explosive Knuckle now gives regeneration if you have automated medical response. You just, you feel better yet? Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I was worried that this trait was going to be completely wasted on Mechanist because Mechanist doesn't have a tool, bo a tool belt. Uh, but they did think about that and it was added to work with the uh, Mech F1. However... You need to make sure your prot is covered, because it competes with one of the traits that helps keep protection uptime. But nice to know it's there. I think this might be intended for um, shortbow scrapper support, because they get some prot from the shortbow. I don't know if it's enough. And then they might be able to take this to help with... Re Actually, they don't really need regen, because they can use... it. I don't know who this is for. <laughs> Mechanist needs this to keep prot up. They don't need this to keep regen up. Scrapper, this doesn't help, so they would take this, but they don't need this either because the elixir gun healing mist uh, right here, this keeps regen up 100% of the time. So Hi. neither supports need this. Maybe it's for World v. World or something. It's no secret that I don't World v. World much. Maybe it's for that. I don't know who uses that. Mecha Legs. This trade has been reworked. Gains resistance on dodging. Um, it's lame. This used to give uh, like 30% run speed or something like that. Um, so they've taken it away from Druids now. They've taken it away from Engineers. And I think uh, Will Benders and Chronos still have it. And maybe a few others. Bunker Down now triggers when disabling an enemy instead of when critically striking. This mine, the mine, now spawns at the enemy's location instead of near the player. Reduce the internal cooldown from 4 seconds to 1 second. Reduce the mine power coefficient, or increase the mine power coefficient. And the bandage now cleanses a condition, and its base healing has been increased slightly. So that is the skill uh, bunker down right here. 
which is it uh, spawns a mine and a med kit whenever you disable an enemy. So it spawns the med kit near you, and it cures a condition and does more healing, and the mine appears the enemy, and it is primed and ready to explode much faster now. Uh, Hollowsmith. Let's see. This stuff was already in the preview. Uh, laser disc increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically. Blade burst reduced cooldown and PVE. Photon wall reduced cooldown and PVE. Launch wall increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically in PVE. Particle accelerator increased power coefficient in PVE. Increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically in PVE. Um, Prismatic converter. This trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. Solar Focusing Lens, this trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. Uh, Nikolai says, if you take Shortbow on Mech, you wouldn't take the prot on the shield trait because you wouldn't have a shield. True? I, I guess that's the intent. I guess Shortbow Mech is the intent, which... I feel like you would lose more than you would gain. You would lose a movement skill. You would lose the three CCs that May Shield has, and you would go from down to one CC on the short bow. Two, if you chain it, you would lose prot and you would gain prot. So that's kind of a cross out. You would lose regen and vigor. If you take that trait, you gain regen, but vigor is lost. And then you've got more healing output from it. Might be okay. God, I hate I hate the engineer short bow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I played it for like three hours. It feels so awful. I guess I guess you're right. I guess it's for that. Um, okay, mechanist, mechanical genius. Reduce the recharge penalty for mech command skills when far away from the mech by fifty percent to twenty percent. I wish this wasn't even here. Rangers don't have to deal with this. I don't like. I don't even main mechanist right now. Freaking get rid of this whole thing. This is this is awful. This doesn't need to be here. Uh, Guardian. The Guardian changes for this update are focused on improving some underutilized skills and traits for both Core Guard and Willbender. New changes. Symbol of Ignition. Reduce the burning duration of PvE. Through the Heart. Increase bleeding duration of PvE. Uh, already seen in recent notes. Zealot's Defense. You can now move while using this skill. Adjusted projectile behavior to interact better with gaps in terrain. Uh, Feel My Wrath skill now grants super speed in addition to other effects. Vigorous Precision now triggers when dodging instead of when critically striking and no longer has internal cooldown. Reduce the Vigor duration from 5 to 3 seconds. Focus Mastery. Protection from this trait will now apply when Shield of Wrath expires instead of when it activates. Uh, Redemption. Increase the duration of Lesser Litany of Wrath from 3 to 4 seconds. Glacial Heart. This trait no longer chills and damages enemies that you disable, and instead heals the user when disabling, immobilizing, or chilling an enemy. Willbender new changes. Flash combo. You gain you now gain access to repose as long as you complete the skill, even if you do not land all five hits. Increase the power coefficient per hit from 0.3 to 0.4 in World War PvP. Repose, the skill is no longer an attack. The skill now heals and removes conditions from you after shadow stepping back to your original position. Heaven's Palm now evades attacks and finishes your targeted foe if they are downed and no other enemies are nearby. You can now move while using this skill. Doesn't this skill have like a 20 or 30 second cooldown? This is going to be a problem. Uh, Roiling Light. Increase roll distance from 300 to 450. Reduced roll duration from 0.75 to 0.5. Quick Retribution. Increase range from 300 to 450. Deathless Courage, this trait no longer removes Aegis from Courage triggers. In reduce the duration of Courage or causes enemy deaths to increase the dura duration of Courage. This trait now grants the Guardian Strike Damage and Condition Damage Reduction while Courage is active. Okay. Mesmer. We made adjustments to Mesmer's support builds in World v. World in the January update, but it's clear that they're still a bit stronger than we'd like them to be, and we're making additional changes to reduce their effectiveness. We've also made some small improvements to power-based Mirage builds in PvE. New changes. Dazzling fixed an issue which caused this trait to not affect certain stuns. Dimensional Aperture fixed an issue that could allow multiple people to take the portal. Uh, March 19th Balance Update Preview. Null Field reduced the field duration from 5 to 2 seconds in World v. World. Reduced the number of pulses in World v. World. Mantra of Concentration increased the cooldown in World v. World. Power Break reduced stability duration in World v. World. Desperate Decoy, this trait has been reworked. Now it grants Vigor when you invade an attack. Master Fencer, this trait now grants increased personal fury duration. Chaotic Transference reduced the shared chaos aura duration from 4 to 2 seconds in World v. World. Temporal Enchanter, this trait no longer increases the duration of Glamour skills. 
Sympathetic Visage, this trait no longer affects nearby allies and only pulls conditions from the player. Chrono, Well of Precognition, now grants allies three stacks of stability for five seconds on its first pulse. Mirage, new changes, Sand Through Glass no longer creates a mirror and now grants a mirror cloak at the end of the evade. Effervescence fixed an issue that prevented clones from healing with a skill. March 19th, Balance Update Preview, Phantom Razor, Increase the Power Coefficient in PvE, Split Surge, same thing, Mirage Thrust, same thing, Dune Cloak, reworked, Gain Mirage Cloak when you shatter two or more clones. Virtuoso, Sword of Decimation skill now applies its bonus damage and inflicts additional defiance damage on defiant foes. An Infinite Forge trait now refunds two blades after casting Blade Song skill with five blades in addition to previous effects. Um... Clones can now heal with spray, Bozer says. Uh, Virtuoso. March 19th, Balance Update Preview. Uh, Sword of Decimation skill now applies its bonus damage and inflicts additional defiance damage on defiant foes. A little early. Um, Infinite Forge trait now refunds two blades after casting blade. Oh, we already read that one. Uh, Necromancer. Support Scourge and World v. World also received a hit to power in the January update with a change to Transfusion. But we feel that the build is still overperforming, so we're increasing the cooldown of some of its barrier sources to make them a bit less potent. We've also tuned up power-based Harbinger builds in PvE to bring them more in line with other DPS builds. Changes. Uh, okay, so most of this is related to the new sword. Satiate Gorge reduced the health cost of them in competitives. Hungering Maelstrom fixed an issue that caused the skill to be unaffected by quickness and slowness. Gormandize and Consume reduce the health cost in competitives. Lesser Spinal Shivers uh, fix an issue that caused this skill to deal more damage than intended PvP. How long has that been going on? Because that's always hit like a truck. Transfusion fixed an issue that prevented this skill from healing the user when they are a Harbinger. <laughs> what? That's, that's funny. I didn't know about that one. You're a Harbinger? No heal for you. Uh, Plague Signet no longer passively transfers conditions from nearby allies to the player, instead grants reduced incoming condition damage to the user. Signets of Suffering now also causes Signet skills to steal life from enemies they strike. Well of Power reduced the cooldown from 35 seconds to 30 seconds in competitors. Scourge from the Balance Preview, Serpent Siphon increased the cooldown from... Oh, let's just say... Okay, hold on a sec. Serpent Siphon, Sandstorm Shroud, and Sand Cascade all got longer cooldowns in World v. World. Desert Empowerment now also grants Vigor instead of Alacrity in competitive modes. Harbinger Vile Vials, this trait has been reworked, now causes Elixir skills to grant protection. The protection can be shared with Twisted Medicine. Um, interesting. Wicked Corruption increased the damage modifier per Blight stack from 0.5 to 1% PvE. Increased the Crit Strike damage modifier from 10% to 12.5% PvE. Cascading Corruption increased the power coefficient from 1 to 1 1.5 in PV, uh, PvE. And it's very interesting they're giving Harbinger a way to give prot. It's kind of cool. It's sometimes nice if you're playing certain support builds, if your DPS support can provide protection. So that is interesting. That does open some doors. Ranger. Condi-based Druid has been overperforming in PvP, and we've brought down some of its defensive tools with the goal of making it a bit easier to take down. We're keeping an eye on the strength of Evasive Purity, but we want to see how the reductions to Healing Spring and Glyph of the Stars impact the build's susceptibility to conditions before making further adjustments. We've also made a few improvements to the Wilderness Survival Specialization to make it a more appealing defensive option for power-based builds as well as condition-based builds. Uh, new changes. Evasive Purity has been reworked. Cleanse a condition when you dodge. Heal if you cleanse a condition in this way. Uh, so I think before it only removed certain conditions, not any condition. Um, Force of Nature, reduce the outgoing damage bonus from 25 to 10% and reduce the outgoing healing bonus in PvE only. Flourish, reduce the initial power coefficient from 1 to 0.85 and delayed power coefficient from 1.5 to 1.275 in PvE. And Wild Strikes, reduce the power coefficient from 1 to 0 0.85, 0, uh, 0 0.85 and the final power coefficient from 2 to 1.7 in PvE. Uh, from the March 19th preview, Wild Swing increased the power coefficient uh, in PvE and World v. World of PvP. Overbearing Smash reduced the casting time of the second hit. Unleashed Overbearing Smash reduced the casting time of the second hit. Savage Shockwave increased the power coefficient per hit 
in competitives. Thump increase the radius. Unleash Thump increase the radius. The first enemy struck by this skill will grant a greater number of boons. Healing Spring, reduce the duration from 10 to 5 seconds and reduce the pulse interval from 2 seconds to 1 second. Reduce the number of conditions cleansed per pulse from 2 to 1 in World of One PvP. So, currently, let's see. Currently, it is 10 second duration and it does 2 condition cleanses every 2 seconds. But it also does it at the beginning. So it does a total of six cleanses, each time twice, for a total of 12. And it hits up to five people, and it can cure up to 60 conditions over 10 seconds if everybody in it was in the worst possible state. Um, they're reducing it down to five, and it pulses every one second. And it'll cleanse one per pulse. So it's going to cleanse... Um, it's going from 12 cleanses on one person to 5 or 6, depending on if it triggers at the moment you deploy it. Uh, Refined Toxins. This trait has been removed and replaced with Survival Instincts. Gain increased outgoing damage and reduced incoming damage. Gain increased outgoing strike damage when above 50% health and increased incoming strike reduction when below half health. Empathic Bond, this trait has been moved to the Master tier, replacing Shared Anguish. This trait now cleanses conditions when swapping pets instead of when using a B skill. And Carnivore, this trait has been added to the Grandmaster tier slot previously held by Empathic Bond. Steal health from enemies when you or your pet disables them. Um, Do we know how much? Hang on. Let's get back on the Ranger here. Hmm... So Carnivore replaced where Empathic Bond was. Empathic Bond replaced Shared Anguish. Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Where, where was that one? Carnivore. Steal health from a disabled foe. 591 damage, 635 healing. Uh, one quarter second cooldown. So if you are hitting a disabled foe and you use like Warhorn 4, which does 16 hits, not all of those hits will trigger this. But whenever... Uh... Oh, wait. It's not when you hit a disabled foe. It's when you disable a foe. Okay. It's when you, it's when you disable... A... Okay, okay, okay. So never mind. Forget the Warhorn 4 example. That's out the window. But if you do CC too close together, you wouldn't trigger this every time. But if you, as long as you space them out by a second, you're fine. And then Survival Instincts, gain increase outgoing strike damage, reduce incoming strength. When above the health threshold, outgoing strike damage is further increased. When below, incoming strike damage is further reduced. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Druid changes. Grace of the Land now applies Might instead of a lack in World v. World and PvP. Natural Balance, this trait no longer reduces incoming strike damage. This trait now grants Boon Duration. Um, hi. Uh, natural balance, uh, which still has a boot for an icon because it used to increase our run speed, but it just keeps getting reworked to other things. Glyph of the Stars, uh, increase the cooldown of this skill in competitives, reduce the number of conditions cleansed in competitives, and reduce the arrival percentage in competitives. It'll still be quite good. Um, untamed, new change. Rampant growth now tracks the intended target better. Uh, March 19th preview. Unleashed Ambush skills no longer are automatically used when auto attack is enabled. Uh, so you have to press the one key to use them. What? My wife brought me a sandwich, and I haven't started eating it because I'm reading patch notes. And I think he smells it. Hi. Uh, where were we? Uh, unnatural Transversal now grants quickness instead of might. Increase of vulnerability stacks applied from 2 to 10. <laughs> so if an untamed appears behind you with that Omaiwa Shindaru crap... You have 10 Vuln, and they have quickness now. Uh, Revenant. Our major initiative for Revenant in this update is to rework the legendary Renegade stance. While the stance is actively used in PvE modes, it has struggled to exist in a healthy state in competitive modes due to underlying mechanics. Our goal for this rework is to reduce some of the visual clutter and increase the counterplay of many of these skills while still maintaining its viability in PvE. Soulcleave Summit will still have a potentially long duration due to being an upkeep skill, but the other legendary Renegade stand skills have all been adjusted to have a more immediate impact, granting an immediate effect on summon and having quicker secondary skills instead of long channels. These skills... What? 
These skills can also quickly combo with a mechanic, uh, mechanic that we're calling Band Together. Using a skill other than Soul Cleave Summit will cause your next Renegade skill to activate instantly with a bonus effect. Sounds like they're trying to do the shortbow chaining thing here. Uh, new changes. Hammer Bolt. Reduce the casting time by approximately 0.4 seconds. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.35 to 0.9 in PvE. And 0.633 to 0.5 in World of World of PvP. Blossoming Aura, reduce the po final power coefficient from 1 to 0.5 in Worldly World and PvP. And Otherworldly Bond, reduce the initial damage from 10% to 5%, and the bonus increase from 5% to 2.5 in competitive modes. Uh, the following was already in the preview. Energy Expulsion, lowered the stability duration in Worldly World, increased the cooldown in Worldly World. Serene Rejuvenation, reduce the Energy Expulsion Resistance Duration in Worldly World. Drop the Hammer, this skill now has a shorter casting time to summon the Mist Hammer, which still strikes after delay. This skill now also recharges Coalescence of Ruin if it hits. Renegade stuff, this was already in previous notes. Legendary Renegade Summons are no longer targetable. Uh, they let's see, Soul Cleave Summit, reduce the casting time by half. Reduce the Energy Cost, reduce the Energy Upkeep Cost. In addition to its current effects, Lieutenant Ophela's Soul Cleave will now strike nearby enemies and heal nearby allies when another Warband member is summoned. Dar uh, Break Razor's Bastion, Dark Razor's Daring, Razor Claw's Rage, and Ice Razor's Ire have been reworked. These skills now grant an additional effect when summoned, then they perform a new skill. Activating these skills also triggers Band Together. Band Together, your next Legendary Renegade skill activates instantly and is enhanced. Activating a Legendary Renegade skill in this way does not trigger Band Together again. New skill behavior is as follows. Break Razor's Bastion grants a resolution to nearby allies when summoned, then performs a skill that heals nearby allies when three small pulses and one large pulse. Final Pulse grants resolution to nearby allies and grants additional barrier to nearby allies when enhanced. Dark Razor grants prot to nearby allies, then dazes enemies, then grants resistance to nearby allies when enhanced. Razor Claw enhances nearby allies' attacks with bleeding, then does an attack that inflicts bleeding on enemies, then inflicts torment if enhanced. Ice Razor's Ire inflicts Vuln on nearby enemies when summoned, then performs an attack that th uh, throws three projectiles at nearby enemies, inflicting Torment, Vuln, and Immobilize, and also inflicts Chill when enhanced. So they've given the spirits the Ranger Spirit treatment. Um, like, they're no, they no longer stay on the field except for one of them. You just throw them, they do a thing, and then they dip out. Um, that is actually the reason, for those of you who've been watching my channel recently, I've done a bunch of videos where I've been trying different supports out. One of the only ones I still haven't done is Heal Renegade. And the reason was I knew that this, this change was coming, uh, and I didn't want to try it right before that. Uh, so I'm going to try it at some, some point in the coming days. Once someone more fluent with Renegade figures it out, then I can copy them. Um, we'll see how this goes, though. Uh, Vindicator, Imperial Impact, this skill no longer extends boons on allies, increase the protection duration from 4 to 5 seconds of PvE and from 0.5 seconds to 2 in PvP World v. World. Increase the Might duration from 9 to 10 seconds of PvE and from 5 to 8 seconds in competitive modes, increase Might stacks from 2 to 3 in competitive modes. Alright, ah, two more, gosh. Thief, Quickness Deadeye was significantly overtuned when it was introduced, but got brought down a bit too far from that point. This update includes a few tune-ups for the build's damage to hopefully bring it more in line with other options. We've also made usability improvements to some traits in the Critical Strikes and Daredevil specializations, along with some minor improvements to acrobatics. New changes. Meld with Shadows reduce the super speed duration from 1.5 to 0.75, and when the Silent Scope trait is equipped to PvP only. Shadows Rejuvenation reduce the initial ga initiative gain on Enter from 2 to 1 when the Silent Scope trait is equipped in PvP only. Death's Retreat, increase the initiative cost from 6 to 7 in PvP. And Death's Advance, increase the initiative cost from 4 to 5 in PvP. Uh, March 19th, Balance Update Preview. Double Tap now pierces. Three Round Burst now pierces. Tactical Strike, this skill now dazes for one second instead of blinding when striking from the front. Increase the power coefficient. Larson of Strike, increase the power coefficient in competitive modes. Shadow Portal, no longer breaks stun. So be careful if you're using that as a stun break. Keen Observer, reduce the health threshold from 75 to 50% PvE. The trait now gives a base critical chance that is increased above the health threshold. Twin Fangs, reduce the health threshold from 90 to 50 PvE. Uh, PvE. The trait now gives base critical damage that is increased above the uh, health threshold. Deadly Aim trait no longer reduces damage and now increases damage from pistol and harpoon gun attacks by 10%. Vigorous Recovery now has been reworked and renamed to Pomping Up. Gain might when you dodge. 
Upper hand now additionally restores initiative when you dodge. Daredevil, uh, old preview note, Havoc Specialist now gives a flat amount, uh, damage bonus when your endurance bar is not full instead of scaling with remaining endurance. New Deadeye Change, Malicious Tactical Strike now dazes for one second instead of blinding when striking from the front and increase the power coefficient from 1 to 1.33. Uh, Malicious Cunning Salvo no longer consumes Malice when recalled. Old Notes, Stolen Skills increase power coefficient in PvE. Shadow Meld, reduce the count recharge in PvE. One in the Chamber, increase damage in PvE. Mercy, increase ammo count in PvE. Collateral Damage, increase the damage coefficient in PvE. Uh, Warrior Strength, uh, sorry, Warrior. In this update, we've tuned up a few of the Warrior's lesser used options in competitive modes. We've also been keeping an eye on how support builds perform with the introduction of staff and may rework some underutilized traits in a future update to give them additional tools if necessary. Uh, Inspiring Whirl fixed an issue that caused the skill to counter its attack around your target. Line Breaker fixed an issue that caused the skill to grant fewer unblockable stacks than intended. Uh, Bullet Catcher fixed an issue that cause, could cause the skill to be cancelled early. I guess I'm lucky. I never experienced um, the, that Bullet Catcher bug. Uh, Path to Victory fixed an issue that could cause this level 2 and level 3 versions of the skill to heal for more than intended. Uh, March 19th, a balance update preview. Arcing Slice, increase the power coefficient from 1.2 to 1.3 PvP. Uh, the power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. 100 Blades, increase the power coefficient in PvP. Increase the final power coefficient in PvP. Rush, now tracks targets better. I know a lot of warriors have been looking forward to that. Uh, Savage Leap, increase power coefficient in competitives. Reduce the cooldown in competitives. Final Thrust, increase power coefficient in competitives. Power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. Last Stand, increase base barrier uh, slightly. Berserker, new changes. Slicing Maelstrom, increase the power coefficient in PvP and reduce the aftercast of the skill by 0.9 seconds. Wild Blow, the skill is now unblockable and inflicts days instead of knockdown. Increase the power coefficient in PvP World v. World dramatically. Rupturing Smash, increase the power coefficient from, uh, well, members in PvP. And Skull Grinder increased power coefficient in competitive. So those were old notes. I was just rereading them. Um, and there's Chip. Uh, okay, a lot of people yelling at me, refresh the page. There is more. Okay. Ugh. Late notes. World Polish. Amanitas. Fixed an issue that allowed players to summon all six guardians before attacking Norris, the Eyes of the Abyss, and prevented the defensive Amanitas meta event from progressing during the final phase. Uh, fix an issue that caused the weekly Seitung Province Jade Treasury Recovery Achievement, that's a mouthful, to be awarded upon, uh, upon completing any event on the map. Interneos fixed an issue that prevented the defeat of Niridum, Chosen of Caribda, and Vespera, Scribe of Caribda, from progressing the Envious Reprieve Achievement. Uh, general, as mentioned in the main notes, main release notes, players who have previously defeated Saris in the Temple of Phoebe Strike Mission Challenge Mode before the changes to the encounter or those who defeat him with the Legendary Challenge Mode active will earn a new title, Legendary Conqueror of Saris, to demonstrate this feat. Players who accomplished this before may appear to have lost credit for the Legendary Temple of Phoebe achievement, but this achievement credit will be restored the first time they enter Lion's Arch, the Temple of Phoebe Strike Mission, or any Guild Wars 2 Soto map. Fixed an issue that prevented certain French player and NPC lines from playing during Guild Wars 2 Soto story. I'm just imagining some, like, crucial piece of dialogue not happening, and then everyone's just like, well, let's go, and you're just like, what? <laughs> Whatever French is for what. I, I would say it there, but I don't know it. <sighs> okay. I think that's all of it. So, again, any sections where it had, like, that right there, that was stuff we had seen before, so I skimmed those. I tried to read all the new changes completely and give my thoughts on them if I had any. Um, interested to see if the re the Renegade stuff is going to change anything. Uh, I haven't seen a Renegade in any game mode in a long time. This was a very welcome surprise. The stuff with the converters, that is really, really awesome. And a few quality of life things here as well. Uh, let's check the usual stuff in game. First off, Black Lion Chest. Is there anything new in the boxes? Um, let's see. We've got Steel Lotus stuff here. The Cyber Howl Greatsword was in there last time. Still looks cool, though. And Toy Maker's Party Skiff skin. Pretty sure that's new. Pretty sure that's new. That is cute, though. I mean, I, I never... I don't even have my skiff on a hotkey. I don't... I never use it. But uh, it is cute, though. Flu Girl's gonna, gonna want that. All right, next up, the gem store. Anything new here? 
Uh, exclusive skin available. Energized shield skin. Um, you know, I was just about to say it's rather unimpressive looking on Asura, and then it transformed. That's kind of neat. Uh, hold on. Let's actually do it in a different screen here. Let's go to here. Weapon. Energized. Where's the energized shield? Here we go. All right. So on your back, it's like folded up. And then when you wield it, it does that. Probably looks uh, better on somebody who's taller. But that is it. That's what it does. It's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. All right. Anything else? Travel with friends package. Recharging teleport to friend. Black lion hero point scroll. Waypoint unlock. Black lion outfit voucher. Uh... That's nice if you use it a lot. The like I, I I use one of these like a year or so. That's not good for me. The rest of this stuff, I mean, if you're really trying to fast forward, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't recommend any of that stuff though. Um and then this is a, a lot of classic stuff returning. The Iron Maidenhood. Um if you buy that you can play Heal Catalyst. What? Uh is the percentage stuff of the is the percentage stuff in the BLC new? Percentage stuff? I, I don't understand that question. Okay. Uh, I think that's... Is there anything new in special? No. That's old. And I did this earlier. Okay. I think that's... Hi. Chip is all up in my face right now. You get the hero points needed when you play Catalyst. I'm not looking to play Catalyst. What the heck? It shows the drop percent. Let me check it again. One sec. Uh, search inventory. Common is 100%. Oh, yeah, I hadn't seen that before. Common is 100%. Uncommon is around... Th is that 3%? Uh, rare is 0.3 to 2%. Super rare is 0.03%. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't remember those being there. That might be new. You're right. That might be new. Might be due to some of those uh, laws in the EU related to games being required to show the percentage chances. Uh, that's only in EU. Mm, yeah, I'm curious because like I'm I'm playing on EU right now. I wonder if I swap to NA later if uh, if I'll be able to see those. In NA, it still doesn't show that. Still, oh wow, just do the do that for everyone. Uh, I'm glad they put that there. It makes me want to never buy keys again. <laughs> I'm on NA and showing that. Okay, well, we just got someone lying in my chat. Can you believe someone would lie on the internet? Unbelievable. Okay. All right. With that, I think I've covered everything I know about. We've gone over the notes. We checked the Black Lion chest. We looked at the Wizard's Vault. And we looked at the stuff on the trading post. That's everything that I've got for right now. If you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, comments on this stuff that I missed, be sure to put it in the comments down below. I will fight you there. And as always, there will be a link to this in the description and in a pinned comment if you just want to see the source.